on the first two games of this series. And as we stand, one game behind the Minnesota Twins in the American League West pennant race. And the Orioles have just taken the game, have just taken the field for game number three. And let's take a look at the White Sox starting lineup. Sox now 19 games over the 500 mark. Leading off in left field, the Rock, Tim Raines. Batting second at third base, Robin Ventura. Big Frank Thomas will DH once again. He'll hit third. Cleanup man is first baseman Danny Pasqua. Warren Newsom's in right field hitting fifth. He's followed by Lance Johnson in center. Ron Karkovice catches this afternoon. He'll bat seventh. Hitting eighth at second base, Joey Cora. And the ninth place hitter at shortstop, Ozzie Guillen. Defensively, Baltimore lines up with David Segui in left field. Mike Devereaux is the center fielder. Dwight Evans in right. Leo Gomez plays third. Cal Ripken Jr. is the shortstop. Juan Bell at second. Randy Milligan will play first base. The battery this afternoon of Dave Johnson and Bob Melvin. Here's a look at Dave Johnson, the fifth native Baltimorean to pitch for the Orioles. Dave is two and three with a 7.99 earned run average, so he has scuffled all year. Starting his 12th ball game, he has given up a lot of hits. 64 hits in 41 and two thirds innings, and only nine walks and 13 strikeouts. So you have to swing the bat against him. He's got a fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. But he has scuffled. American League is batting 348 against him this season. His last start Tuesday against the Brewers, he beat him. Going over six innings, gave up five runs on 10 hits. He walked two while striking out two. Left-handers have really been nailing him. They're hitting him at a 380 clip. Right-handers are batting 310. So Dave Johnson hasn't been fooling a whole lot of folks this year. The umpires this afternoon, Don Denkinger is at home plate. Larry McCoy at first base, Derwood Merrill at second, and at third, Tim McClellan. Well, the Sox trying to inch a little bit closer to the Minnesota Twins, just one game behind them right now as we stand, and it is Black Sunday here in Baltimore for the White Sox, wearing their black tops, trying to keep that winning streak alive. Tim Raines is in the batter's box. Johnson's ready to go, so here's the Hawk. All right, Wimpy, thank you very much. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox baseball. Sox with that six-game winning streak. They also are 21-9 and nine since the All-Star break. A lot of good numbers here. They've won 16 of the last 19 and 34 of the last 46 as Tim Raines will lead it off. Timmy hitting at 259, three homers. He's knocked in 38. He's six for 10 in this series, takes it well off the plate, and the count 1-0. Baltimore 23 games under the 500 mark with that 66 and 43 record. As the count evens at one. Sox took the opener seven to four. That was on Friday. Good relief pitching. Carlton Fisk, Robin Ventura, and Lance Johnson. And last night it was six to four Sox. Three run homer by Fisk and a big two run homer by Hazi Guillen. There's a strike. Breaking pitch in the count one and two. So Ozzie, exactly a year to the day since he hit his last homer. That coming off Nolan Ryan. He got Mike Flanagan last evening. Johnson will work quickly as there's the fastball inside corner. Tim didn't particularly care for that one. Sure did. Looked like it might have been a bit inside. Let's take a look at the last pitch. He comes inside. Melvin wants it there. He got it. It came back a little. Don Dekinger said it came back enough. Timmy disagreed. There's one out anyway. Here's Robin. So our picks to click. Tim Raines was well, Skip Ellison, our producer director. Whippy has got Warren Newsom. Then I've got Robin Ventura. Robin hitting at 302, 16 homers, 67 RBIs. Four for six in this series with a couple of rippies. And there's a base hit. Well, I wanted you to pick Robin because I really like him, and I knew that he'd get a few hits today if you take him in the pick to click. Well, he nails this <laughs> one. Third. Over 300. Hitter, number 35. He's probably will get four this Tom. afternoon. With your luck, not his, yours. Take a look at the swing. Oh, he is such a sweet swinger. Hawk mentioned so many times, makes that contact out in front of home plate, lines it in the center field. So Ventura one for one, here's Big Frank. 
Big Frank, three for eight in this series, hitting a 320, 22 homers, 83 RBIs. Takes it off the plate. He also is hitting 15 of the last 16 ball games. Hit a 418 clip with six homers and 22 knocked in. Thank you very much. That's good. Johnson's one of the toughest guys in baseball to steal off of. Watch his delivery. See how he left foot, very little leg kick, comes home. That's ball two. There's one thing about it. Robin doesn't have to worry about it. That's right, because he's not going anywhere, is he? Thomas, he has hurt Baltimore pitching this year. He is 17 for 36 with four homers and 11 RBIs. Ooh. This is the 11th meeting of the year between the two clubs. Sox hold a 7-3 edge. They have played four games here at Memorial Stadium. Sox have won all four. Took the opening two here, and of course, opening up the season, they took that two-game set. And the Sox, one of the better, if not the best, road team in all of baseball. 30 and 21, nine games over 500. That's good. And they also have won eight consecutive road games. It's real good. That ball hit deep in the right field. Evans going back, back. He's at the track. Looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. A two-run homer for Big Frank Thomas, and the Sox lead it 2 zip. Well, the Sox got a big lift last night with that three-run homer by Carlton Fisk, and Big Frank goes up and gets a high fastball. Hits it over the right center field wall. Give the Sox a two-spot early in this ball game. That ought to make... Jeff Torbort, Wilson Alvarez, and everybody else concerned feel just a little bit better. Big Frank now with 23 homers on the season, 85 RBIs. Watch the high heater. Up, out over the plate, just goes with it. Boy, as this season goes along, Frank is becoming a much better high ball hitter, isn't he? He just adjusts. Whenever you talk oh. about it so often, he gets up there against a pitcher that's seemingly having a lot of trouble with. All of a sudden, either later on in that at bat because he sees so many pitches or certainly in his next at bat as Danny fouls it off in the count of 2 He makes some adjustments up there and he is just remarkable in that aspect. Amazing. 320 plus right now. There's Ozzie. Wow, his <laughs> fifth homer and 13, 13 RBIs against Baltimore this year. Danny goes down. Two out, and that'll bring up Warren Newsom. Wimpy's pick to click. Deacon hitting at 292, a homer. He's knocked in 17. Boy, he had a big base hit last night, leading off the seventh inning with that double. Before Ozzie's two-run homer put the Sox ahead, five to four. No, well, he's been great. See that batting average, 292, and 17 RBIs, just over 70 at bats on the season. That's terrific. When Newsom makes him get the ball down, he hits the ball hard. Yes, he does. Outstanding low ball hitter and an outstanding off-speed hitter. There's a base hit in the center field. <laughs> On the breaking ball. I think he just muscled that one through the infield. Oh, Noose, he has put together. Number one. Third hit by the White Sox already in this inning, and Dave Johnson, he has given up a ton of hits. Of course, that eight-point earned run average that he had coming into the ball game would indicate that the people are hitting him hard. 67 hits now given up in just over 42 innings of work. Here's Lance Johnson. Lance won for nine in this series, but that certainly does not tell the story. He has driven in two. That was in the opening game. Put the Sox on top two to one. And he has just caught everything that has been hit out there anywhere close to right center, center, and left center. Milligan off the end of his glove. That's going to be a base hit as Newsom will hold it second. Al Jackson coming out to the mound right now. You know, Lance Johnson is now hitting 500 against Dave Johnson in his career. He's now 8 for 16. 
They haven't ruled on that yet. This is a tough play. Milligan has to go far to his right. He was going to make the play to second base had he caught that ball. Get the force out. He can't come up with it. So runners at first and second with two out. That'll bring up Karkovice. That's got to be a hit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Batting seven. The catcher. Number 20. Ron Karkovice. Tigers swept a doubleheader from the Yankees yesterday in the first of another doubleheader this afternoon. They're leading 1-0 in the first inning. Uh-oh. So here's Kark. Hitting a 250, couple of homers, 12 RBIs. Kark 0 for 4 in this series. Outfield straight up. Breaking ball off the plate. Two runs on four hits for the Sox. Fastball up high in the count, 2 0. They just did give Lance Johnson a hit on that. Really? No question about it. Yeah, well, they just, the guy just <laughs> said it a second ago. Right? Yeah. That's up high, 3 0 the count with Joy Cora on deck. Three oh nine down each line here at Memorial Stadium. Three sixty in the short gaps. Three seventy six medium gaps. Three eighty seven deep gaps and four oh five straightaway center field. There's the strike in the count. Three and one. Now one thing that Johnson hasn't done this year is walk many people. Just given up nine walks over forty innings of work. So he will throw strikes. Yank him out of here, Kirk. Pops it up. Here comes uh, Randy Milligan. Cannot hang on to it. Call Bobby Melvin off of it. So Kirk gets a reprieve. Yeah, that ball wasn't hit real high. And it was the first baseman's ball if he can get there. You don't want the catcher involved in this unless he definitely has to make the play but he's playing off the line right there not holding the runner on with first and second he makes the sliding effort bread basket try and he can't come up with it so Carco gets another swat here and the runners will be in motion Newsom at second and Johnson at first That's inside. Ball four. That'll load him up. And that'll bring up Joy Cora. Joy had his 11-game hitting streak stop last evening, but that was really immaterial in comparison with the defense that he played. He made four good plays, three outstanding plays, I should say, and one other good one. He's one for seven in this series. So the sacks full of socks. Activity down in the Baltimore pen. Todd Froworth. Pretty good hack right there. Out of playing the count on one. And in talking about Joy's good plays last night, here's one of them. And he made a couple like this. This is, I believe, off Orsalak. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was. There's a hit first slide by Joe. And at the end of the game, another beautiful. This was just a good play. That was not that hard. But still, it was a good play. Pitch up high in the count one and one. Boy, the Sox last night definitely threw some leather at the Orioles. Tim Raines, an outstanding catch in left center field off the bat of Randy Milligan. A 
Ball to strike two out here in the top of the first inning. Here's Todd Froworth. Submarine right-hander. And the skipper Johnny Oates. Outfield spread out. Shaded just a bit to the left. Another good hack by Joy. And the count one and two. Now he keeps pitching Joey Cora downstairs, throwing in those breaking balls. He's going to hit one hard here in just a moment. Driving a couple more runs. Sox would love to see that couple more on the board early. Although that is not usually the best of scenarios that we have seen so far. Once we get ahead early on, it seems like it just quits and we wait till the other team catches up and then kick it into another gear. He gets Cora, but the Sox get on the board. Big Franks. Two run homer is 23rd of the year. And after having to play, it's Sox 2 and the Orioles coming to bat. Two nothing White Sox as we head to the bottom of the first inning here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Big two run homer by Frank Thomas. Put the Sox aboard here and let's take a look at the Oriole lineup. Leading off in center field, Mike Devereaux. Batting second at second, Juan Bell. Cal Ripken Jr. once again plays shortstop, hitting third. Cleanup man right fielder, Dwight Evans. Randy Milligan at first base, hitting fifth, followed by left fielder David Segui. Chris Hoyles is the DH, batting seventh, hitting eighth at third. Leo Gomez and the ninth place hitter, catcher Bob Melvin. The White Sox defensively have Range Johnson and Newsom in the outfield. Ventura, Guillen, Cora, and Pasco around the horn. The battery this afternoon, Wilson Alvarez making his Sox debut and Ron Karkovice. This is what Wilson did in Double A Birmingham, 10 and 6, 183 earned run average, had three complete ball games. He averaged better than a strikeout in inning. Got good stuff. Mike Devereaux takes the fastball strike from the 21 year old Southpaw, the hard throwing Southpaw. Of course, Wilson Alvarez coming over from the Texas Rangers in that Harold Baines deal. Sox got Sosa, Fletcher, Alvarez. For Baines and Fred Manrique. See the opponents hitting under 200 against Alvarez. It's just a matter of time. As we've talked about him the last couple of springs. Wimpy, it's just a matter of time until this young man matures. And it turns out, barring injury, to be a, an outstanding Major League pitcher. That souvenir right side. Boy, Ed Farmer told me before the game he was really impressed. He saw him pitch last week. He had great command of all his pitches. He walked quite a few people. When you look at his numbers, he's walking about a batter every other inning. But in recent starts, he's just been terrific with his control. Well, I'm sure they wouldn't have called him up if he'd been walking a lot of those guys uh, in his recent starts. Yes. <laughs> Grab some bitch. Mercy. Get your red hot right here. Now, that was low heat. He just really popped the glove right there. You know what hurts? Look at this. Number one. One. Bow. Right at the knees. Bang. See you later. Here's the switch hitting second baseman, Juan Bell. Hitting at 193. A homer 12 RBIs. He's one for six in this series. Danny Pasco coming over to get some glasses. Well, there's some legitimate gas right there. <laughs> Well, Devereaux's a good high ball hitter, and he certainly want to difference. pitch him down there, but there's a mismatch for a lot of folks <laughs> on that pitch. <laughs> he could have been a dead low fastball hitter and still had not the hand by that one. There's a strike on the outside corner. Man. That's the first man Wilson has retired in his major league career. He had another start, as you mentioned earlier, with the Rangers. Didn't get anybody out. Right. Might as well mention that now. He gave up three runs without recording an out. So he lost that particular ball game. This is not the same guy, though. Well, that was three years ago. He was right. 18 years That's old. Right. That's a pie. One and two the count. Yeah, that was an 89. Two balls, two strikes. Looks like he's overthrowing his breaking ball a little bit, Wimpy. Which is understandable. He's nervous at this point. Got that juice flowing. 
see if Juan can hit this heater. Nope. Yeah, scrap some bitch. <laughs> Ooh, Lordy. Severe heat coming at you. This is high octane. You talk about gas. That's a little bit upstairs. That's Beltai fastball challenging him. And Juan Bell can't catch up with it. Let's see if this guy can. Junior, Cal Ripken Jr. having a terrific year, hitting 323. 24 homers, 76 RBIs. Had three hits last night, including that 24th homer. Junior can catch up to him when he just says nothing but dead red. But right there, right on the outside corner to knees, that's nasty. Well, he has thrown a few right there already this afternoon. Yes. You got to dial it up a little more in that one, Peru. Yeah. If you're going to hit this guy, you're going to have to look for his best heater. You got to be thinking 93, 94 miles an hour and take anything that's spinning. Well, he's throwing harder right now than anybody on our staff. Oh, no. I mean, no he's, question. He is getting it up there in a hurry. He has some definite giddy up on it. But he's still going to have to get the breaking ball over. A little, tar <laughs> little tardy right there. <laughs> Cal remains 0 and 2. Notice Wilson's got those big hips, big legs. Here's the 0 2 heater. Watch where he makes contact. See, that ball's almost by him by the time the bat comes through the zone for Cal. Got to hit it out in front of home plate. Or try to, anyway. Heat him up. Breaking Ooh. ball. That's a good hook right there. Farmer says he's got a late breaking curveball, and you could see that that is a very tight rotation on that pitch. Well, as hard as he's throwing it, that's the only way he can be as a late breaker, and it's got to be tight. I mean, he's just right as I said. I think he's overthrowing it a little bit right here. He's getting out there with that upper part. You know, as we talk about so often when a youngster, especially a young pitcher, gets a little anxious out there. You see Ed Farmer, assistant to Ron Schuler. That's but him. He can. It's understandable. Grab some bench. So Wilson Alvarez punches out the side here in the first. And after one, Sox lead it two zip. Two-nothing Sox here in the top of the second inning. It'll be Ozzy, then the top of the order, Tim Raines and Robin Ventura. And if you just tuned in and missed the first inning for Wilson Alvarez in a White Sox uniform, he just blew the Orioles away. And before Ozzy steps in, let's pause for station identification. Fastball off the plate. And along with Tom Pachori, Ken Harrelson from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore as the Sox try to run their winning streak to seven and their road winning streak to nine. Ozzy slashes that one out of play. That's a breaking ball. It'll be extra bases. As Evans looking for it to hit the corner. Now Ozzy is going to pull up wisely as Evans with that good arm. So a leadoff double. That's Ozzy's 12th of the year. He's just a real good off-speed hitter. And you can make great pitches to Ozzy Gain. He's going to still hit him hard. Right here, he got out in front of a breaking ball, nails it right down the first baseline. Watch the Ozzy ruin action here. Curve ball down and in, bang. Between Milligan and the bag. So he's at second, nobody out. And Timmy Raines gets a chance to hit here. Get him over there, Tim. What is the deal now with Ozzy? He's got to hit a home run now every August 19th off an Irish pitcher. It's Nolan Ryan Irish. August 10th, right. you mean? I mean, August 10th, yeah. Whatever you say. Yeah. That's, that's all. I'll tell you, it is ironic, though. Last night was Cal Ripken's 10th anniversary in an Oriole uniform. Made his first appearance 10 years ago. And then Ozzie, last year off Nolan Ryan, he and Craig Graybeck went back to back. 
two little Smurfs. And then last night he gets one of the, I'll tell you, in the last 15 years, one of the toughest left-handers in baseball and Mike Flanagan. Especially on left-handed hitters. Oh, but yeah. Jeff Torborg told me this morning, Oz, he's hitting almost 500 against Flanagan. Uh-oh. Nope. Good call by Derwood Merrill. Here comes Johnny Oates. <laughs> that was a good call for the good guys. Very good. I'd like to see that one again. Dave Johnson. He's quick. He holds runners on very well. And look at Cal Ripken sneaking in. He's safe. He got his hand in there. Good call by Derwood. Oh, that was close. Yeah, but you can see he got his hand in there from up here. You could see that, huh? Definitely. Well, from the naked eye before that replay, I thought he was definitely out. Oh. <laughs> and on the replay, it was well, you closer. you got your Oakleys on. Though. Well, yeah. They're... That's right. Hasta la vista, baby. Now, watch very closely. You'll see Ozzy definitely gets his hand back in there. Hand, then tag. Whoa. You're right. Great call, Derwood. Well, that's a tough one, though. Rock checks it up, takes a strike. Timmy over one. To the Sox with the two runs on the five hits. Orioles, no runs on no hits, as we mentioned. Wilson Alvarez just blew Devereaux, Bell, and Ripken away. He didn't trick him at all. 0-2 oh, the count. Ventura on deck. Tim Raines doesn't appear to be picking up the ball at all off the, out of the hand of Dave Johnson. He's been late on every ball that he's tried to swing at, and then he, he was paralyzed on that third strike that he took leading off this ball game. They want to get back in there. One and two. Sox will conclude this series with the Orioles tomorrow night. We will have that for you right here over Channel 9. Black Jack McDowell against Big Ben McDonald. Well, oh, there's a good pitching matchup. Tardy on the fastball in on the hands. So the count hangs at one and two. going to be tough for Tim Raines to pull the ball in this sequence of pitches right now. He's been behind everything that Johnson has thrown up there. You want to pull, get Ozzy to third base with less than two outs for sweet swing and Robin Ventura, the on-deck hitter. Now feel for the most part straight up. Breaking ball high in the count evens at two. After the finale here against the Orioles tomorrow night, It'll be on to Detroit where the Sox will have a doubleheader on Tuesday. Singleton's on Wednesday and Thursday before finishing up this 11 game 10 day road trip with three against the Yankees in the Bronx. Souvenir left side. Pops him up. Leo Gomez. That ball wound up in fair territory. Tim Raines pretty much standing at home plate when that when he caught that ball. No Robin. He'll have to drive him home with a single here or some kind of base hit. Runner Third remains baseman. at second base with one out. Robin. And a reminder there are still individual game suites available for games in August and September at Comiskey Park. Just dial the White Sox sales office at 
Robbins started off that two run first with a sharp single into center field. He is now five for seven in this series. Takes it off the plate. Frank Thomas on deck. Takes it low. Two balls, no strikes. Right, Johnson wants to have a little chit chat with Bobby Melvin. Neither team had batting practice before the game. The Orioles had their annual father son's daughter's game. Those are always nice to watch. They're always fun. A little toddlers trying to scurry around the base paths. Actually, most of them were being carried around the base pass by their dads. <laughs> <laughs> Little guys. Just catches a corner. So the count two and one. There's a shot base hit right back through the middle. Here comes the Azaru, and no throw. He scores. Sox lead it, three to nothing. Yes. Robin Ventura gets his 68th RBI of the season. Robin, prior to this at bat, hitting 320 with runners in scoring position, he got a 2-1 fastball out over the plate, and he just drills it. I'll tell you what, Robin is really developing some kind of eye at the plate. He does not swing at anything bad, working the count in his favor. Of course, when he's got Hawk picking him as his pick to click, he's got to have a great day. So he's two for two with an RBI and a run score. Here's Big Frank, that two-run homer. Tremendous drive over the right center field fence. Takes it up high in the count, 1-0. and oh. Big Frank now with 23 homers, 85 RBIs. Also, Chester's favorite stat. Chet Kopik, he has now reached base in 104 of the 110 Sox games. 2-0 the count. Kopik loves that stat, doesn't he? Oh, he does, yeah. <laughs> he just gets <laughs> mesmerized by that. <laughs> That's him. Three and 0 the count. Pasqua on deck. Big Frank with 96 walks on the season. We mentioned last time up, he now has five homers, 13 RBIs against the Orioles this year. And that's a whole bunch against one club. Souvenir right side. Wasn't a real good hack by Frank on a 3-0. Think about Frank, though. He can take an ugly swing at a ball and still hit it hard someplace, get himself a hit or even extra bases. See those numbers against the Orioles. So impressive. That's it deep in the right center field. Way back, Devereaux. That defense jumps. He brings it back into the park. That will be a double for Big Frank on a great effort by the center fielder, Mike Devereaux. Boy, this is truly a great athletic move right here by Devereaux. I thought it was way out of here. Watch it, fastball out over the plate. Frank hits, it didn't quite get it all. See the contact a little bit behind him, but watch the play by Devereaux, timing it, getting to the wall, making a super leap over the fence, just off the end of his glove. We don't quite see it right there, but he flips it back in the play, he tries to bring his arm back over. He was so far over the fence, he tried to bring it back and just couldn't get it, couldn't keep control of it. So Frank Thomas, 25th double on the season. Right there, that elbow hit the top of the fence, and that's what shot the ball out of his glove. What a play, though. Whoa.
I'll tell you, Big Frank, he really didn't hit that ball that good. He just muscled it out there. Yeah. He's just starting to really shorten up these ballparks. It's like a little league field to him now. It's, some it's of these almost places, like yeah. you know, what we've been watching the last couple of days, you know, at Crooked Stick there in the PGA tournament with that daily. He's just making those 460 yard par fours. Driver and sandwiches. <laughs> That's about the same way Frank is shortening up a lot of these ballparks. Well, Frank's using a two iron, I think, with it. most of the balls he's hitting. Man, he's something. He is. Getting more awesome almost every day you see him. Here's Pasqua. And he struck out his first trip. 3 7 0 for the Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Birds. And he beats that one foul. Danny Pasco with that strikeout is now five for eight in his career against Dave Johnson. So he has hit him very hard in the past. Got two runners in scoring position now. So get at least one of them in here. They're playing back. They're going to concede the run up the middle. I feel bunched straight up. One strike pitch. A little looper into left center field. Devereaux will back. He will not be able to get there as Ventura scores. Big Frank in the third. Sox lead at four to nothing. Yes. Forty fifth RBI of the season for Danny Pasqua. Johnny Oates is on his way out to the mound now. That'll be it for Dave Johnson. Late break by the outfielders. They just didn't. They were both on their heels right there, the left fielder and the right fielder, Deverell. I mean, the left fielder and the center fielder. See, Danny looks like he hits this one a little bit off the end. And they both misread it. Deverell coming hard right there at the last part of the play, but he can't make the play. Ventura will score from third, but Frank had to make sure the ball wasn't caught. So he's at third. Runners at the corners. It's 4 nothing Sox. And a break in the action. As Dave Johnson will depart, and we'll be back to give you the numbers on the new Baltimore pitcher right after this. There you see the White Sox dugout. They got to be a happy group of campers. Four runs, eight hits, no errors against Dave Johnson this afternoon. He works just an inning and a third. He did strike out three. That's the only positive side of the outing for Dave Johnson. Jeff Torborg and his crew will look at big right-hander Todd Froworth now. Submariner, you can see that motion he has he's been effective three and two with a 182 earned run average in 29 ball games has registered one save given up just 37 hits and almost 50 innings of work walking 16 while striking out 34 Froworth is particularly tough on right-handed hitters they're batting just 171 against them this year in his last 18 ball games he has a 1.69 earned run average so he has been very very effective as of late he comes in on a tough situation though Dave Johnson leaves runners at the corners with just one out, a four spot on the board already for the White Sox. So he's got his work cut out. He's got to hold them right there to give his offense a chance to get back in the ball game. Looks like the ball is carrying very well this afternoon. And if the Orioles start putting in a play against Alvarez, they might have a chance later on. But Froworth has got to start, stop the Sox right here. Warren Newsom will be the hitter. Deacon had a single up the middle. That was last inning. 4 8 0 for the Sox. Oh, oh, and oh for the Birds. Thomas at third, Pasqua first as Milligan will now hold him on. And they'll back off as time is called by home plate umpire Don Dinkinger. Takes it up high. Get a note out on the scoreboard. In the first inning at Skydome, Red Sox leading the Blue Jays 5 to nothing. That's Gardner against Key. Joe Carter has committed two errors, allowing three Red Sox runs to score. So that's the Carmines over the Blue Jays 5 0, top of the first. 2 0 the count. 
Boy, don't you think, I think the they might be turtlenecking that thing up there a little bit? I, you know, I saw that uh, thing with Gaston and Wells. I uh-huh. think it was what I heard, too. I think it was Cedar was upset about the location, not about the selection. Ah, uh-huh. okay. That's what it appeared to be. Hard hit to Ripken. Bell, they turn it. So that'll do it, but the Sox pick up a couple of more on four hits. Norris one left after an inning and a half. They lead the Birds 4 zip. Four nothing Sox here in the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Evans, Milligan, and Segui to face the 21-year-old rookie left-hander Wilson Alvarez, who struck out the side in the first inning. And there was no trickery involved. He just flat blew him away. So here's the 39-year-old veteran hitting at 262 for homers, 28 RBIs. He's one for four in this series. Alfield shaded a bit to the right. Takes the ball. Up high, two another count. Knox with two in the first on Vic Frank's two-run homer if you just tuned in. Added two more in the second. Thomas with a double, being robbed of a home run. Off the plate to count three and zero. Lost his balance right there. So the first, if you just joined us and did not see the first inning, we'll show it to you right now. Mike Devereaux leading off. Low gas, grab some bench. Juan Bell hitting second. Grab some bench. Cal Ripken Jr. Grab some bench. Here's Milligan. Randy, three for seven in this series, hitting at 278. 12 homers. He has knocked in 58. There's the strike. Alvarez out of Maracaibo, Venezuela. 6-1. Looks to be about 210. They got him listed in that. <laughs> in that guy at 175. That's wrong. He's another full figure guy. Yeah, he's not 175, no. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Ball and two strikes to Milligan. Well, Wilson Alvarez has one of those fastballs that he can just come after these hitters. He doesn't have to aim for the outside corner, inside part of the play, especially early in the count. You got some patient hitters on this Oriole ball club, and you certainly want them to swing the bat when you got a 4 nothing lead. And he's a little bit tardy right there, so the count hangs at 1-2. and two. In 152 innings at Birmingham, gave up 109 hits, had 165 strikeouts. And as Wimpy mentioned, the lone negative area in there was the 74 base on balls. Breaking ball high, and the count evens at two. Ozzie, he'll take it himself, rack him up. Batting six. Pretty routine right there. That ground ball took Ozzie right to the bag. He stepped on it with his left foot over the first base. And big play there for Wilson Alvarez as he wriggles out the first little bit of trouble that he had today. We'll bring up the switch hitting left fielder, David Segui. David hitting at 270, a couple of homers, 16 RBIs. He's been to the plate one time in this series. He's 0 for 1. Up 
takes a strike. And a reminder, you can plan a pregame party below right field at Comiskey Park on the Kingsford Charcoal Patio Area. Party packages are available for groups of 20 to 1,500 people. So for more information, just call the White Sox sales office at 312-924-1000. Gary out there, the, that's where the Bertucci boys roam. One hopper right to Joey Cora. And that'll do it. Nothing across. No hits after two. Four nothing Sox. Four nothing Sox. As we showed you, are going to show you a little bit of that father son's daughter's game. There's a little Chris Hoyle's son. And watch him. He hits the ball. He wants to go to, no, not to first to second. And whoops. But I'll tell you, those little tots there. So much fun to watch. Big Sam Horn. This little boy just walking around. <laughs> oh, I love those games. Lance Johnson will lead it off here in the top of the third inning. It'll be Johnson, Karkovic, and Cora. Four runs, eight hits for the Sox. No runs, no hits for the Birds. Speaking of Birds. Guy, that bird's got a nose almost as big as yours. Come on. Two hopper. Bell. One pitch, one out. Oriole mascot up here by the booth. So that'll bring up Ron Karkovice. Kark drew a walk back in the first inning. Underneath slide ball right there in the count 0 and 1. Gomez even with a bag of third. Outfield bunch straight up. Fastball on the corner and quickly 0 and 2. Got the rotation in the Tiger series. Coming up starting on Tuesday with a doubleheader, Tanana and Gullickson in that doubleheader. On Wednesday, Terrell. On Thursday, Lighter. Flips that breaking ball outside in the count 1 and 2. He hung on to it. So Kark is gone. Two out, and here comes Joy Cora. First strikeout for Froworth. You can see that he's awfully tough when he keeps that ball around the knees. He's got certainly good movement on that sinker. Not a whole lot you can do from that position. Sinker slider. We can also throw the very controversial upshoot. From that spot, take a little bit off your slider, and the ball just seems to want to rise a bit. Upshoot. Yeah, remember when you were a kid, you threw an upshoot? You never did? Never that was one of the best. Upshoot. You had a good upshooter? Oh, yeah. Just kind of spin it and goes up. They hit it a mile. <laughs> <laughs> What do you the count? The only guy I've ever seen him throw an upshoot was Ryan Davis when he had that spitter. He threw from underneath and uh -huh. it just took off instead of sinking like every spitter does. It just takes off and, and rose. Two balls and a strike. Ron Davis threw a spitter? That's what they say. One Whoa. Ball. Two and two. Ozzy on deck. Oh, last two at bats for Ozzy. Should say two out of three. He's had a homer, a two run shot, and a double. Ooh, off the foot. So the count hangs at two balls, two strikes, two out here in the top of the third. Wilson Alvarez on the hill for the Sox this afternoon. Through the first two innings he has worked. One walk and three strikeouts. Joy beats that one foul. The Sox hang to maintain the position. 
and get to 20 games over the 500 mark. Joey's gone a one two three inning for Todd Froward. After two and a half, Sox lead it for zip. A participating advertiser of White Sox baseball is Center Dodge Garage, where it's Advantage Dodge. Look at that. Conflicting loyalty in that household. Now he's still here. Chris Hoyles will lead it off here in the bottom of the third inning. Sox lead it four to nothing. It'll be Hoyles, Gomez, and Melvin. Chris hitting at 263, six homers. He has knocked in 22. Pretty good hack right there as that one is fouled back. Cart coming back right at the edge. He'll run a room. Knock about five rows. Well, no contract given out on that one. Well, the gentleman got hit in the back with that one. Did he? Yeah, he's all right. Not a real good effort, though. Ball and a strike to Hoyles. I would say he's probably as dangerous as anybody in this lineup against Wilson Alvarez. Yeah, he looks like he's a pretty good fastball hitter. Quick bat. Pretty good numbers for a catcher, 263 on the season. He's got six home runs. Splitting catching duties for the most part with Bob Melvin. So when he right side, so the count hangs at one and two. And Alvarez reading his notes here. Once fan 21 hitters in a little league game. He has represented Venezuela in all international tournaments at every age level. Through 12 no hitters between 81 and 86 for Venezuela. Two balls, two strikes. Pop-up. He was right on him. Ozzy making the call. The catch. And that ball was way up there. You're right. He was right on him, Hawk. But the tendency with those good fastballs is that you're going to hit under him a little bit. And that's exactly what he did there. Didn't quite get it. So one up, one down here in the third. That'll bring up the third baseman, Leo Gomez, hitting a 219. He has six homers. He's knocked in 23. We have 0 for 3 in this series. Another nice crowd on hand. Orioles averaging 32,250 per home date. Pops it up right side. Warren Newsom making the call and has the ball. Holly Knight. 29 year old catcher Bob Melvin. Ninth place hitter. Bob hitting at 286, a homer. He has knocked in 20. Two for three. That was last night. Now feel swung way around to the right. Big gap between Lance and Reigns. Takes it low. Fastball off the plate and the count 2 0. There's the strike just on the corner.
Fouls it away and a count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out here in the third. Full count. Alvarez with the one walk and the three punch outs. Yes. Grab some bench. One, two, three inning. After three, Sox lead it four nothing. Top of the fourth inning. Four nothing Sox on top. It'll be Ozzy then at the top of the order. Reigns and Ventura to face the right hander Todd Froworth, the second Baltimore pitcher. Four eight no for the Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Birds. A reminder, if you are interested in obtaining a seat from Old Comiskey Park, there are still some available for 250 bucks. With all those proceeds going to Tony Phillips, went deep for the Tigers. That's Sarudi against Cataray. Second game, it will be Aldred against Leary. Also, Boston leading six to nothing now at Skydome. That's after two and a half. Gardner against Jimmy Key. Later on, Cleveland and Kansas City. Oakland to California. That's Mike Moore against Gray. Minnesota at Seattle. That's Tappany against Kruger. And Milwaukee at Texas. August against Brown. Two strikes, Dazi. National League, Montreal at Philadelphia. That game tied at one after four. That's Nabholtz against Ruffin. Ball and two strikes. Cardinals leading the Pirates. That is three to nothing after three and a half at Three River Stadium. Tewksbury against Tomlin. Rain to lay down in Georgia with the Braves leading Houston one nothing after one. That's up the middle. That'll be a base hit. So Ozzy two for two. First hit off Froworth. Well, Ozzy's a good matchup for the White Sox against a. Pitcher like Todd Froworth, who is a sinkle baller. Ozzy's a good low ball hitter, both breaking ball and fastball. And that's what he should get against Froworth. So, leadoff man on with speed. Ozzy, 18 for 24 in stolen bases. What they're doing four times this year at Baltimore, it's a great idea, Hawk, is showing, is giving out packets of baseball cards four times during the year to about 120 per packet for the fans in the final season here at Memorial Stadium. Everybody that's ever worn an Oriole uniform is included in that package. And there's wow. Ron Kittle. That is a nice gift. And Kitty is in this packets that were given out today. There he is. One strike pitch to Tim Raines as Fulworth will go over to Milligan. Timmy 0 for 2. He struck out and popped a third. As he takes off, Melvin. They get him. Ozzy just looking at Derwood Merrill. Ozzy didn't get a real good jump right here. And Melvin's been having a tough time throwing out base runners. I believe that's only the 11th one that he has thrown out this year. You see Ozzy looking up to see if the ball was going to be put into play. The throw is a little bit to the first base side. Cal and Ozzy get a little bit tie, tied up there at second. The slide, the tag. He's out of there. Watch out. Into the crowd. So the count one and two. The ball, two strikes, one out. With that 0 for 2 this afternoon, Reigns now 6 for 12 in the series with an RBI. Yeah. 
Rock knew it. Third strikeout for Fro. We're sixth strikeout by Baltimore pitching. That's one thing about those submariners. They throw nothing straight. Everything is going to move. That's right. You see the delivery. Right? Not many guys do that. Kent to Colby. He just nails the outside corner. It looked like that one was a little bit of a cutter, a little bit of a slider action on that pitch. Here's Robin. Takes it low. Robin, two for two. RBI and two runs scored. Melvin, incidentally, now has thrown out 11 of 48 base dealers this year. Two balls, no strikes. See, that's kind of an upshoot right there. <laughs> From down under, it comes How up a little bit, spinning. This is low. <laughs> no, it, it, but it started off at the ground. Okay, there's a sinker. <laughs> I'll show you an upshoot, one of these pitches. I'll just jump right in. Three and the count. Go out there. You can work a house. You can work an audience. There's a the strike. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't want to hit off this guy. Oh, I hated those submariners. Oh, that Kent to Colvie or Quisenberry. Got that one up over the outside part of the plate. So the count goes full. The big hurt on deck. Big Frank Thomas. Of the upper tank. Up shoot. Wrong. <laughs> That's ball four. So for the third straight time, sweet swing and Robin is aboard. First walk issued by Froworth, and here comes the big hurt. Thomas. That's what he did back in the first inning with Robin at first base off the right-hander Dave Johnson. Gets a fastball up out over the plate. You can put it on the board. Towering drive deep into right center field. Yep, and a second time, only a great play by Mike Devereaux in center field. Kept the ball in play, and he got a double on it. Thomas takes a strike. Frank with 23 homers, 85 RBIs, has 25 doubles. It's hitting 16 out of the last 17 games. Nineteen for 38 this season against Baltimore. One one pitch. Three balls and a strike with Pasqua on deck. 4 9 and 0 for the Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for Baltimore. Hard one hopper with that top spin to Juan Bell. He'll throw him out and that'll retire the sun. Nothing across. After three and a half, four zip Sox. Center fielder Mike Devereaux leads it off here in the Baltimore fourth. Four runs, nine hits for the Sox. No runs, no hits for the Birds. Devereaux a strikeout victim in the first inning. When Wilson Alvarez just punched out the side. A little tardy right there. It'll be a souvenir right side. But what a play he made off. Big Frank Thomas. Coming in the second inning, Robin Big Frank of a second home run in this ball game. Watch him go high over the fence, right in the webbing of the glove, and then flip it back in. Outstanding effort. Breaking ball misses, and the count one and one. Change. Whoa. Ball and two strikes. Now that's nasty right there. Ed Farmer telling us he throws a circle change. 
And that looked like almost a screwball effect right there. Boy, you can throw that thing over. That fastball appears that much quicker. Two and two. It'll be Devereaux, Bell, and Ripken. So you think the Rangers made a bad trade, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Cues that one. Why do you say that? <laughs> I love the deal when it was made. When the, when the deal was made, I like the deal. Yeah. Sosa, Fletcher, and Alvarez. Fred Manrique and Harold Baines went to the Rangers. And of course, Harold is with Oakland right now. And Manrique out of baseball. It's hit in the left field. Timmy is there. One gone. What, is, uh, what do the Rangers have for that deal? Well, they've got Champarino on the DL. Champarino on the disabled list and I think they got a couple other guys in the minor leagues you know from the Harold Baines trade but you know they really didn't wind up too good on that one. Here's Juan Bell he was also a strikeout victim. Files that one away. And a reminder, you can take advantage of specially selected weekends for a Chicago White Sox ticket package at the Hyatt Regency. Spend a weekend in luxury at the beginning of the Magnificent Mile and enjoy all the excitement of White Sox baseball. Make reservations at the Hyatt when the Sox play Seattle. That'll be September 27th, 8th, and 9th. Now the first 50 people will be treated to a private behind-the-scenes tour of New Comiskey Park. So for reservations, just dial 800-233-1234. It really is a terrific deal. Ball and two strikes to Bell. Hit in the right field. Lance. Newsom playing Bell very close to the line there. Yeah, some big Sox fans from Roscoe, Illinois, the Ballsley family. John, Denise, Jason, and Ann. Be remembered to Andrew, who's watching at home. So the Ballsley family from Roscoe, Illinois. Roscoe, yes. Here's Junior. He also was a strikeout victim his first trip. Pops that one out of play right side. Also John White from Chicago here. As we mentioned, there are just a ton of Sox fans here in Baltimore, as I'm sure there will be the same thing, Wimpy, the way this thing is growing in Detroit, in New York as it was in Toronto and Boston, all over the American League. Yeah. There's one right there. I would anticipate big crowds in Detroit. A lot of people will drive up. From Chicago, Tigers aren't weren't really drawing good at all the first time in there, but you got to think that they will be now that they're in the pennant race. One and one to count to Ripken. Same thing happened last evening as was the previous night. Sox coming out, the hundreds and hundreds of fans out there waiting to get autographs. Wow. All-speed pitch and a count one and two. And the Sox had to drive into the loading area of the hotel so they could get up to their rooms at a reasonable hour. That's a heck of a lot better than having nobody there though Wimperu. You're not kidding. One two pitch. Hit hard in the right center field. Newsom, good jump. He can makes the catch. Nice play. One, two, three inning for Alvarez. Third time he's done that in four. And after four, Sox lead it 4 0. We're back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, top of the fifth inning. Sox leading it 4 to nothing. 4 9 0 for the White Sox. Nothing across the board for the Baltimore Orioles. It's Wilson Alvarez all the way for the Sox. Froworth in relief of Dave Johnson. There's that sinker ball to Danny Pasqua, ball one. Oh. 
Whoa, he got him. There's an upshoot. He got him in that right cheek. And let's pause for a station identification. Right fielder, Warren Nilsson. We're back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Sox leading it 4 0. Danny Pasqua just was hit by a pitch. To lead things off in the fifth inning, it'll bring up the Deacon, Warren Newson. He did get hit by an upshoot, by the way. Sinker hit hard. Gomez over to Bell for one. He'll turn it. That's a second consecutive double play the Deacon has hit into. And Newsom has scalded the ball in all three plate appearances. Take a look at Pasquer getting hit by the breaking pitch right here from Todd Froworth. See? That ball was coming down when it hit him. <laughs> that was a slider. Two down, Lance Johnson, the hitter. A reminder on Thursday, August 29th, the Sox begin a four-game series with the Cleveland Indians. Now, Friday, the first 20,000 adults will receive a hip pack, courtesy of Miller Lite. So we'll take us just out. Take it. Nice to 312. 831 Sox. That's a hip pack, courtesy of of Miller Lite, Thursday, August 29th. Yeah, we heard you the first time. Hip pack. For us full figure guys, yes, we'll take two. They're small. Uh, oh my. He wanted that one. Dankinger would not give it to him. Another breaking ball. Upshoot. Well, dink. I'll tell you, old Deacon has scalded that ball three oh, times. He today. really has. Well, he hits the ball hard the opposite way, doesn't he? Lance scalds this one right at Juan Bell. He makes the catch, so Froworth works out of that little bit of a jam he started with the hit batsman. We're halfway through the game at Baltimore. It's 4 nothing Sox. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago White Sox and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the expressed written consent of the Chicago White Sox. Bottom of the fifth inning. There you see it, the Sox clinging to that 4-0 lead. It'll be Dwight Evans, Randy Milligan, and David Segui, the first three hitters to face Wilson Alvarez in his first White Sox appearance. Fastball, pops this one up right side. Carco throws his mask away. Pasqua over there, and Carco makes the catch in front of the Sox dugout. So one pitch, one out here in the fifth. Evans tried to jump all over the first pitch fastball, first just couldn't baseman. get to it underneath. So one pitch, one out. Bruce Corda is here at the ball game. He's in the Army and working at the Pentagon, and he wants to say hi to his family, his dad, Bob. Number one White Sox fan from Elk Grove, Mom Lois, and all his family in the Chicago area. Randy Milligan, first ball, fastball swinging, and that's a fall tip off Karkovice, one strike. You see Kark trying to get the cobwebs out. Wilson Alvarez has been outstanding in his first White Sox appearance. Hits the outside corner at the knee, strike two. Breaking ball down low, one and two. Randy Milligan has an 11 game hitting streak working for him coming into this ball game. Six for 42, that's a 381 clip. Fastball hit hard in the right center field. Warren Newsom back on the track, and he makes the catch. Two up, two down here in the fifth inning, and tomorrow night, the Sox conclude this series with the Baltimore Orioles, and it will be on WGN at 6.30. It is an added telecast, so make sure you note that. And tune in tomorrow night. It'll be a great pitching matchup between Ben McDonald of the Orioles and Black Jack McDowell, the ace of the White Sox staff. Hopefully the Sox will be going for a sweep. They can hold on here. Changeup misses down in the way to David Segui. 
Here's Jack in the center field bleachers enjoying the ball game. Dave LaRoche on the left, Kate, Ken Patterson. Black Sunday here in Baltimore. Pop up right side. Pascal may have a play. Not a whole lot of foul ground. It's coming back, and he gets it. Three up, three down inning worked by Wilson Alvarez. It's still 4 nothing Sox at the end of five. 4 nothing Sox here in the top of the sixth inning. That's the story. Four runs, nine hits, no errors for the Sox. No runs, no hits, and no errors for Baltimore. 21-year-old Southpaw Wilson Alvarez having quite a debut in a Sox uniform. One walk, four strikeouts. It'll be the lower third of the Sox order, Karkovice, Cora, and Ozzy. Tarko for one, he's walked and struck out. That's a little looper in left center field. That's going to fall. Thank you. Right in front of Mike Devro. So Kark aboard. Didn't hit it hard, but it was in the right spot. Right in that gap between Segui and Devro, left center field. So the leadoff man on here. Joey Cora, the hitter. Joey having a tough afternoon. Two consecutive strikeouts. With Ozzy coming up next. Might be looking for a bunt right here. He's checking the boomer out right now. Terry Bevington at third base. Going to give him the sign. Second hit. Given up by Todd Froworth. And a reminder, on Sunday, September 29th, well, that will be Fan Appreciation Day. Sox will host the Mariners at 1.35 p.m., so come out to the park and receive a special gift. Tickets are still available at your local Ticketmaster location. We'll get it done. Beautiful job right there by Joey Cora. He got a breaking ball, up shoot, <laughs> and was able to just to deaden that ball perfectly down the first baseline, right where you diagram it. That's Jim Poole, left-hander. We have seen him on a couple occasions, tough left-hander. And Ozzie will hit. Ozzie two for two on the afternoon. Got that batting average up there to 266, raising it four points. He has scored a run, double and a single to his credit. Pops that pitch. We ain't trying to bring it back, but Gomez will run out of room. You don't see many pop outs here, do you? I can fall ground in this ballpark. It's not a whole lot of. Not a whole bunch of foul territory. Uh uh. Got to help your batting average. As opposed to, say, the Oakland Mausoleum. Oops. A ton of area to fall out. One strike to Ozzy. Now feels short, swung around to the left. Count evens at one. Took a little something off that one. Ozzy out in front over that lead hip. So the count one and two. Sox took the opener seven to four on Friday. And last night it was six to four. Big free run home by Carlton Fisk. Two run shot by Guillen. They came out smoking in the first inning today. Two run homer by Big Frank Thomas. Added two more and leadoff double by Ozzy. RBI single by Ventura. Another double by Thomas and RBI single by Pasqua. 4 10 0 for the Sox.
Two balls, two strikes. There's a big hurt. 23rd homer, 25th double. Now has 85 ribbies. He can hit. He can hurt it. <laughs> it hurt all the same. No, no, no. Has a good eye, and the count goes full. That's ball four. Second walk issued by Froworth, and here comes Reigns. Timmy O for three. Left fielder, Tim Reigns. Lock struck out twice, and he's popped a third. Orioles have turned a couple of double plays. Sox have turned one. Jimmy back in 83 became the first player since Ty Cobb. 70 stolen bases and 70 RBIs in one season. Slashes that one foul. Watch out and the count one and one. That's pretty amazing because yeah, when you really consider all the great base stealers, when they stole those bases, they really weren't really driving in a whole lot of people. And Ricky Henderson didn't do that, huh? I see. Uh, well, 83, of course, Ricky was just uh, yeah. coming into the right. league. Yeah. I'm sure Ricky has done it since then. That yeah. is a fair ball right over the bag down in the left field corner. Here comes Cart. They're going to wave Ozzie around. He's going to score. Sox lead it 6 to nothing. Yes. Right down the third baseline into the corner. Misplay here by Segui. Watch it. He could have prevented that second run from scoring. There's the fastball sinking away. Reigns a little bit tardy right here. You can see he's making that contact almost behind him, but it just does get in between the base and third baseman Gomez right there. Segui, a little bit of a misplay, and Ozzy, very heads up base running once again, scores that sixth run. And the Sox, there you see it, 6-11-0, nothing for the Orioles. Johnny Oates is out to the mound right now. Could be a pitching change. Yes, there is. All right, a break in the action as Froworth will depart. Looks like the southpaw Jim Poole coming on. We'll be back to give you his numbers right after this. That's the story here in the top of the sixth inning, and as the southpaw Jim Poole takes his warm-up toss as a reminder, the long-awaited auction of memorabilia from Old Comiskey Park will be held on August 17th. Now, tickets are six bucks in advance, available through Ticketmaster. At the door, those same tickets will be $10. A catalog of auction items is also available for six bucks through Ticketmaster. So for more information, just call Leslie Hyman's Auctioneers at 312-670-0010 or Ticketmaster 312-831. One Sox. And as you look at Tim Raines at second base, Timmy with his 15th double on the season. He now has 40 RBIs. So starting to come alive with that bat, getting a little production. He's chatting with Cal Ripken Jr. Sox leading at 6 0. And a new pitcher, left hander Jim Poole, acquired from the Dodger organization. No record, good earned run average, 198. Appearing in his 12th ball game, he has one save to his credit. 13 and two-thirds innings. He's given up just 11 hits. He's walked three while striking out 14. He's got a good, hard slider. And that is the best pitch that he brings into the ball game. And he'll be facing the left-hander, Robin Ventura. Robin's been perfect on the afternoon. The Hawks pick the click. Two for two, an RBI, two runs scored. He has also walked. So he has a chance to add on to those totals right here with Tim Raines in scoring position. 
The outfield for Ventura is bunched in the gap. They're giving him the lines in both left and right field. Breaking ball, good one, Robin. Can't catch up with it, one strike on the hitter. Robin's got that batting average up to 305 right now. He's picked up three points going two for two. Reigns with great speed at second base. Sox leading it by six. Another breaking ball, that pitch is high. Perfect afternoon for baseball. 85 degrees at game time here in Baltimore. A little bit of a breeze, no humidity in the air. And the Sox have come out smoking once again. There's a fastball, catches the outside corner at the knees. Good pitch by Poole. He hung a breaking ball. Robin jams himself a little bit, and that ball's going to fall in front of David Segui in the left field for a base hit. Reigns will have to hold up. I'll tell you, these Baltimore outfielders are not getting a very good jump on the ball, especially the balls that are hit in front of them. Right there, it looked like a pretty routine pop-up to left, but Segui not able to come up with it. So Ventura now three for three. Watch the pitch right here. It's a hanging breaking ball. Robin kind of jams himself with it. And Segui, a late break. So the outfielders certainly are not helping the Baltimore pitchers this afternoon. That is the 12th hit for the White Sox. And Big Frank has a chance to do some more damage. Runners at the corners with just one out. There's a fastball, misses inside. There's a ball hitting the hole. Ripken can't get it. Reigns will score from third. It's 7-0 White Sox. And Big Frank drives in his third run of the afternoon. I'll tell you, when he hits the ball on the ground, it just scoots through there. Ripken had no chance to even move on that one. Frank has hit the ball hard on four straight times. Four straight occasions. Watch the replay. Fastball down and in. Frank gets the head of the bat in front of home plate, nails it in the hole. So Frank Thomas now with 86 RBIs on the season and that batting average just keeps climbing upward and upward. Yep, about 325, 326 right now. Three for four, Danny Pasqua takes a breaking ball, strike one. Sox leading it seven is nothing. 7-13 and 0 for the Sox and nothing across the board for Baltimore. The big hurt. Pasquale up there with runners at first and second. Still one out. Ooh, he chases a bad slider. Quick breaker, though. Poole has a good off-speed pitch. Well, Todd Froworth, the line on him is he had pitched four innings, gave up three runs all earned, three hits. He walked two while striking out three. Jim Poole on in relief. Danny Pasquale hits this one off the end of the bat. Segui coming on, he's able to make the play this time. Pascal retired, two down, runners retreat to their bases. Ventura back to second, Thomas back to first. So Danny Pascal now one for three on the Warren. afternoon. Newsom. And that'll bring up Warren Newsom. Warren has hit the ball hard three consecutive times, has a base hit, and is grounded into two double plays. He'll be facing a lefty once again. Didn't have a real good at bat against Mike Flanagan last night. <laughs> I was talking to Jeff Torberg about that one before the game. Mike Huff, a little bit outshooted last night. That's the reason he didn't go up there and pinch hit. So Warren may have felt like he was a bit of a sacrificial lamb against a tough lefty in Flanagan. Let's see how he does against Poole here. Lance Johnson on deck, another left-handed hitter. 
Well, that's not a real good swing. Tried to check up. Couldn't. One and one now, the count on Newsom. Sox coming into this ball game, hitting 261 as a team. That is what the American League average is. It's 261. They are tied for sixth in the league, but fourth in pitching. 367 earned run average, and how about that bullpen? They've been great. There's a breaking ball, catches the outside corner. Sox bullpen, look at this. 31 consecutive scoreless innings. 30 strikeouts, they've given up 12 hits, five walks, 114 opponents batting average. And the bullpen's earned run average in the last 51 ball games is 1.80. Breaking ball misses the outside corner, so therefore if the starters can give you five innings, five or six strong innings, that bullpen has just been slamming the door on teams. One of the many reasons why the Sox have been able to pick up so much ground in the American League West. Just one game out of first place going into today's action. And there's one of the reasons, Sammy Ellis, the pitching coach. Gotcha. Fastball right there, so Newsom goes down on strikes. That'll do it for the Sox, but not before they put another three spot on the board. We've completed five and a half innings at Memorial Stadium. It's seven nothing White Sox. Chris Hoyles will lead it off. It'll be Hoyles, Gomez, and Melvin, the lower third of the Baltimore Orioles. Chris popped up to shortstop, a towering pop-up. This is the guy right here, as I mentioned, Wimpy scares me against Wilson Alvarez. Pretty good hack is that got Dinkinger. Whoa. So you want to be an umpire? <laughs> Sox with two in the first, two in the second, three in the sixth. Trying to stretch this winning streak out to seven games and stretch their road winning streak out to nine. Hawk, who was that National League umpire that used to get hurt every game behind the plate? I'm trying to think of his name. Was Doug He's Harvey? Retired. No, not, not God, no. <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's since retired. Ed Sudol, yeah. He, I'm telling you what, he'd get hurt every game when he was behind the plate. Three, four times. Sometimes it'd carry him off. One and two the count. I'll tell you guys, used to get popped a lot over here. It was, God rest his soul, a great umpire. Nestor Shylock. Oh, really? Oh. Well, he was a good one. But it just seemed like if there was a foul tip, it was going to get him. Nowhere to, nowhere to hide back there. Ooh. Breaking ball low in the count, two and two. Now feel straight up for Chris Hoyles, 26-year-old DH this afternoon. Pops him up. Ventura making the call. Has the ball, one gone. You know, if I'm an umpire, you look at those guys behind the home, behind home plate with that inside protector. That doesn't look like it really protects them. I would rather have one of those balloon things and put my whole body behind it. Wimpy, all you Maybe need, a shield. All you need to be a, <laughs> an umpire and to be safe is just to have a mirror. A what? A mirror. Just turn it's around good. this way. Use the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Leo Gomez. I'll tell you one thing in a second here. <laughs> I remember when I was a catcher, I used to, I should have put the mask on behind my head because I turned, I got hit in the back of the head so many times with foul balls, you couldn't believe it. <laughs> Gomez popped up to Warren Newsom in right field his first trip. Up to this point, Alvarez has faced the minimum. Walked Dwight Evans leading off the second, and Manny Milligan hit into a 6-3 double play. He's retired everybody outside of that who's been up there. There you see the line on Wilson. He's doing good. Keep it up. And Ramon Garcia, in case you did not hear, Ramon Garcia was sent down for Alvarez. 
You know, a lot of folks out there are probably wondering, Hawk, why doesn't other team, why don't other teams do those things that the White Sox are doing right now? Well, the, the reason is the Sox pitchers are so young, they've got so many options left that you can almost rotate them on that basis. Most teams can't do that. Not that flexible. Plus, there's something called talent as well. Right. <laughs> a lot of teams yeah. don't have <laughs> two or three young pitchers down at the AAA level that when they're in a pennant fight can bring up. Good point. Ooh. Ooh what was that one? one? Plate. So Gomez draws a walk. My turn. And that'll bring up the catcher, Bob Melvin. Karkovice saying something to Don Dengager. To wit, you missed it. Melvin, a strikeout victim his first trip. Takes it low. Fastball up off the plate, so the count 2 0. Now Kark will just yell out a couple of words of encouragement. Yeah, and he also fired that ball back to him about as hard as Wilson threw it to home plate. Kark can get it back there in a hurry. Ho, ho. And when he wants to get your attention, you know, Kark's very, not very vocal. When he wants to get your attention, he can get it. There's a good fastball strike. So the count two and one. If you joined us late and did not hear the numbers on Wilson down at Birmingham, at 23 starts, 152 innings, 109 hits. 165 strikeouts. That's it into center field. Lance. Two gone. A lot of room out there in that area. 405 to dead center. You don't see too many balls hit out of straightaway center, so that's a good place to be. And once again, a reminder the game tomorrow night has been added to WGN's. Chicago White Sox schedule. And what a pitching matchup it is. Blackjack McDowell against Big Ben McDonald. There'll be some McHeat with the McPictures. Oh boy. Tomorrow night. What a Mc matchup. There is a good strike and the count. Oh, and one to Mike Devereaux. He struck out and he flied to left. Boy, Alvarez got that nice, easy delivery, doesn't he? Kind of shoots it right over the top. He's deceptive, too, with that motion. As we mentioned, he's got those powerful legs, big hips, powerful legs. The only thing that he has to do, which I'm sure he did down in the last few starts at Birmingham, is just not try to get out there too quick. Try to get out there too quick, and all of a sudden, everything just comes apart. The 0-2 pitch. Yes, grab some bench. That'll do it. Nothing across after six. 7 13 and 0 for the Sox. Zip, zip, and zip for Baltimore. 7th inning, Sox on top, 7 to nothing. Reminder Monday, August 19th, the Chicago Tribune half price night. Come to Comiskey Park and see the Sox host of Detroit Tigers. Tickets are still available at your local Ticketmaster. Call 312 831 1 Sox. As you see, Wilson Alvarez making his debut in the major leagues for the White Sox. Has got a no-hitter through six. But for the Sox here in the seventh, Lance Johnson will lead it off. It'll be Lance Karkovice and Cora to face the Southpaw Jim Poole. Wilson made a major league appearance back in 1989 for the Rangers. Just one. There's a strike and a count 0 and 2. Mm -hmm. 
Lance single in the first. Bounce to second and third, and he hit a bullet to Juan Bell in the fifth inning. That's a shot right. Boy, he is just hammering the ball and coming up empty. Another hang with him. I'm surprised I didn't pick him. Yeah, he really is nailing the ball. Lance putting a good swing on everything. The key right there is not to get discouraged. Just stay in that same mode, that same frame of mind. Go up there, hit the ball hard. Eventually, they're going to fall in. But they'll never even out for good hitters. No chance. Here's Kyrick. He's one for two a walk. He let off the sixth inning with a single and scored. Cues that one. Now field bunch just a bit. Gomez back at third, well off the line. Outside, one and one. Just one home run in the ball game if you've just tuned in. Two run shot by Big Frank Thomas in the first inning. He scored Robin Ventura, who had drilled a single to center. Pitch popped up. Ripken. Two gone. Little note up on the board just now, Hawk, that Karkovice has thrown out 47% of the base dealers attempting to steal. What's the major league average right now? You look at Wilson Alvarez. It's about 35 or so. Yeah, 30. but it, you know, it, it's still, as we've talked about so many times, Wimpy, those numbers really are misleading. It doesn't make any difference because of the yeah. pitching staff that you got. There's just one thing that everybody knows. If you got to have somebody behind the plate to throw out somebody, it's Karkovice. Cora. Joy over two this afternoon. He has a sacrifice bunt. That's right to Juan Bell. A little soft line drive. So Jim Poole has himself a one, two, three inning. And after six and a half, Wilson Alvarez. That is the story this afternoon. Juan Bell leads off the Orioles seventh. He has struck out and he's flied to center. It'll be Bell, Ripken, and Evans. Fastball and the count one and one. Seven runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for Baltimore. Alvarez has walked two with five strikeouts. Bell telling Don Dinger that Wilson went to his mouth. Should be a ball. I said hard in the left, right at Tim Rain. One go. We got a plate this morning and did not have the scores or didn't hear them. Yesterday, Oakland beat California three to one. Cleveland shut out Kansas City one to nothing. Tigers beat the Yankees a doubleheader, five one four nothing. Seattle shut out Minnesota eight zip. Milwaukee over the Texas Rangers five two, and Boston beat Toronto seven to one. That was yesterday's action. Here's Ripken. Junior over two. He struck out in the first and he lined hard to Newsom in the fourth. He dialed it up for that one. There you see coming into the day, Sox. One game back. Sox trying to pick up their 65th victory. Go 20 games over the 500 mark. Slider beats that one foul. So the count 0-2. It's getting interesting, Wimpy. You're right. Got eight more to go. 
Boy, he get, keeps getting ahead of these hitters, though. Certainly going to help his chances. Just off the plate in the count one and two. There's one thing about it. Wilson Alvarez is doing it with stuff. It's not like you bring up a young pitcher. He's out there tricking them because it's the first time they have seen him. Oh no. He is doing it with an outstanding fastball. There's a number out in front of the play. Carcavice calls him off and oh, throws it away. Jeff Torbor going out to the mound, maybe complaining that Ripken was out of the baseline. Running inside the foul line, which would certainly hurt Karkovice's throw to first base or the angle that he'd have. Interesting to see how they score that. I think it'll be an error. And the fans listen to the 40,455. <laughs> what happened here is that Kark's so anxious, being aware of what's going on. Kark called him off a little prematurely, Wimpy. We'll take another look at it right here. There you see him, just a little chopper in front of home plate. There's Kark, he's so quick back there. He just had to chase a little further in the end. Too. You can see Wilson Alvarez had to play right in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, Wilson could have made the play. And the throw was there in time, but it was offline. And Carco had to make that off-balance throw, too. He was wide open. He couldn't set himself properly to throw. So Ripken at second base with one out. Dwight Evans the hitter. And the first error the Sox have made in quite some time. And the first time the Orioles have had a man at second base. Here's Dwight Evans. Pops it up right side. Joey Cora going back, making the call now. Newsom. Now Cora. Joey, there's only two out. Joey thinking there's three out. So with two out, that'll bring up the first baseman, Randy Milligan. Randy is hit into a double play, and he is lined deep to right. Takes it low. To another count. David Seguil on deck. Three balls, no strikes. Third walk issued by Wilson Alvarez, and here comes Segui. David has bounced to second. David. And he is popped to first. Sammy Ellis out to the mound now to talk with Wilson. 
Karkovic and Ozzie Guillen in the conversation as well. Situation with Cal Ripken at second base. Randy Milligan is the runner at first. David Segui, a much better right-handed hitter up there at the plate. He came in hitting 348 from the right side. About 100 points lower than that from the left side of the plate. So he's much more dangerous right here. Chris Hoyle's the on-deck hitter. 7-0 White Sox lead. 7-13 and 1 for the Sox. No runs, no hits, and no errors for Baltimore. Two out here in the Orioles seventh. Now feel swung a bit around to the right. That's tardy. Souvenir right side in the count of 1-1. To count. That'll get your attention, won't it? Boy, he is still throwing in that 90 mile an hour range. Hasn't lost anything from his fastball from the opening frame. Off the plate. Two balls on a strike. Ripken at second, Milligan at first. Ripken reached base on the arrow, and Milligan the walk. Two and two, could not get to that fastball. Well, you know, Baltimore has hit a few hard balls hard this afternoon, Hawk, but they've all been in the gaps where the ball doesn't appear to be carrying all that well. So some good intelligent pitching there by Wilson every time they have hit the ball hard. It's been someplace where one of the White Sox outfielders can run it down. All the ones have been hard have been hit to the opposite field. Yeah. Oh, yes. Where was it? Oh, my. Come on. Good looking fastball right here on the hands of Segui. Really ties him up. Oh boy. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Only ball that was really hit hard by a right handed hitter pull was that one fouled by Ripken. Yeah. That's hit in the right field. Newsom. Yes. The Deacon makes the catch. And that'll retire the side. After seven here at Memorial Stadium, Wilson Alvarez has a no-hitter and a seven-nothing lead. 21-year-old Southpaw, Wilson Alvarez. As you look at the line score right there, seven, 13, and one for the Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for Baltimore. Activity down in the Sox pen. Melito Perez, Brian Draymond loosening up as Ozzy will lead it off. Ozzy is two for two this afternoon. As Ripken, as the ball hit the mound, he throws him out, robbing Ozzy of a base hit. But the story, rookie Southpaw Wilson Alvarez. His walk three has five strikeouts. He struck out the side in the first inning. Okay, you're looking to the Baltimore eighth. It'll be the lower third of the order. Hoyles, Gomez, and Melvin. So indeed, Ripken is going to definitely get another shot at him. But right here, Tim Raines steps in. Tim one for four, had a two-run double in the sixth inning. Fastball strike. Sox with two in the first, two in the second, three in the sixth.
Almost a blueprint. And the count one and one. Ball and two strikes with Ventura on deck. Interesting, Wimpy. Six to oh go. Got to get by Hoyles. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, if anybody's going to break it up, that would be my pick. Who would be yours? Well. Got him on the outside corner. Timmy doesn't like it. Back door on the breaking ball. Right here by Poole. Oh, that came a long way uh, to get to that spot. That, couldn't that, get that, there. That had to go around the plate. Couldn't well, get there. Timmy goes down. That's a third strikeout. Third time Reigns has struck out, but he did have the big two-run double in the sixth. Here's Robin. Three for three this afternoon. Takes a breaking ball strike. Robin singled in the first, scored. Drove in a run in the second with a single, scored. Walked in the fourth, single in the sixth. Off the end of the bat, broken bat. So Poole's going to have an easy one, two, three inning, but still a story. Wilson Alvarez as they get set to go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Sox leading seven to nothing with a no hitter. Bottom of the eighth inning, seven nothing Sox, a no hitter. Being spun by this 21 year old rookie Southpaw, Wilson Alvarez, in his Major League debut in a White Sox uniform. Chris Hoyles takes the strike. Hoyles over two, he's popped a short, and he's popped a third. Outfield shaded just a bit to the right. Mike Huff in right. There's a looper, Lance Johnson coming on. Yes! What a play by Lance Johnson! Oh, one dog does it again. What a great jump, a great job by Lance Johnson. Hit off the end of the bat by Hoyles. Lance with a super jump right here, and watch the diving. Backhand stab. Whoa, it doesn't get any better than that. I didn't think he could get that one. Mercy, what a beautiful play by Lance. Oh. So one out. Leo Gomez. Your attention, please. For the White Sox, playing right field, number 12, Mike. Huh. Gomez has popped to right and walked. One and one to count. That's in the center field. Lance is there, makes a catch, two gone. Catcher, Bob. There's Huff. Melvin. Two out, and here's a catcher, Bob Melvin. He has struck out, and he's flying to center. Oh, what a play by Lance Johnson. That's in the right center field. Lance giving ground. He's there, makes the catch. After eight, Sox lead it seven to nothing. Wilson Alvarez, a no hitter. You are looking at 21 year old rookie Southpaw Wilson Alvarez, who has a seven nothing lead as we get set to go to the top of the ninth inning. And there is the line score. Wilson with three walks. Sox have committed one error. He has five strikeouts. 
But for the Orioles here in the top of the ninth, a new pitcher, Greg Olson, coming in, making his 50th appearance. There you see the 1-4 record, 3.38 ERA. He has the 24 saves, 50 and two-thirds, 50 hits, 51 strikeouts. So Olson, the fourth Oriole pitcher of the afternoon. And before Big Frank Thomas leads it off, let's pause for our station identification. And along with Tom Petroy, Ken Harrelson from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where we have seen something very special this afternoon. Wilson Alvarez back in 1989 making one start for the Texas Rangers since that time has been in the minor leagues. And this afternoon twirling a no-hitter as Big Frank hits it off the glove. Here comes Ripon underneath. Just in time. Outstanding play by Cal Ripken. Big Frank now three for five on the afternoon with a homer, a double, and an RBI single. Thomas is homer in the first inning, his 23rd. Three RBIs, he now has 86. That'll bring up Dan Pasqua. Danny is one for three, RBI single back in the second inning. Sox with two in the first, two in the second, three in the sixth. Takes it up high in case you're looking to the Oriole ninth. It'll be the top of the order. Mike Devereaux, Juan Bell, and Cal Ripken, Jr. Morning one to count. And once again, a reminder, tomorrow night, finale of this four-game set, we will have that game for you right here over WGN. And Thursday from Detroit. And Friday and Saturday from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. There's a base hit for the hammer. So Danny, two for four. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Mike Huff, making his first plate appearance. Mike going in for Mike Warren Newsom, who was one for four Mike. this afternoon, but Deacon just nailed it three times. Had a single in the first inning, hit a rocket into a double play in the second, and the same thing in the fifth. So here's Huff. There are the numbers on Michael 251, a couple of homers. But what a job he's done since being acquired from the Cleveland Indians on waivers. Strike on the outside part of the plate and the count nothing in one. Ooh, Lordy. What a, a day this has been. You had to guess possibly something was going to happen. When Wilson Alvarez came out in the very first inning and just blew away Devereaux, Bell, and Ripken. Wilson out of Maracaibo, Venezuela. Ball and two strikes to Huff. Curveball. Cal Ripken. Bell. Rack him up. That'll do it. Nothing across for the Sox. Meanwhile, they lead it 7 to nothing. Meanwhile, Wilson Alvarez goes after a no-hitter here in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. That's the story. No runs, no hits for the Orioles. Mike Devereaux will lead it off. Takes a strike on the outside corner. Devereaux 0 for 3, two strikeouts, and he's flying to left. It'll be Devereaux, Bell, and Cal Ripken, Jr. 21-year-old rookie Southpaw Wilson Alvarez. Yes, in the count 0-2. Alfield swung around to the right. Up high, a ball and two strikes.
Hit hard into center field. Lance Johnson, good jump. Back at the track. Hauls it in. One gone. There have been some balls hit hard this afternoon, but only one play that you would call outstanding to save. Up to this point, the no-hitter. And that was made by Lance Johnson off the bat of Chris Hoyles. Last inning. Great play. Here's Juan Bell. Struck out, fly to center, and lined hard to left. Hey, Hawk, he looks like he's got just as good a stuff here from the dugout as it did from upstairs. He's just throwing the daylights out of his fastball. Good breaking ball right there to Bell. One and one to count. Two balls and a strike. Seven, 14, and one for the Sox. No runs, no hits. For the Orioles here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Three and one. Full count to Bell. Ron Kittle just called that pitch from the dugout. He says 3-2 breaking ball. Bang, got him. So with two out, bottom of the ninth, that'll bring up the 39-year-old veteran, Dwight Evans. Evans has walked, he's popped a carcavice, and he's popped a second. Breaking ball, Owen 
side. Pasco playing back. There's a strike in the count, two and one. Coming to Evans with off speed stuff. Three balls, a strike. Randy Milligan, the on-deck hitter. Milligan is hit into a double play, hit the ball deep to right field, and walked. Breaking ball strike. Side. Count hangs at 0 2. Two out, bottom of the ninth inning. Take another look at the last out to strikeout of Randy Milligan. Good breaking ball down. Randy 
let's go down to Tom Patrick with the 21-year-old Southpaw, Wilson Alvarez. All right, thank you very much, Hawk. And Wilson, Wilson Alvarez has done something that very few people have accomplished in Major League history. He was just unbelievable effort today. Uh, you just can't even imagine it. Wilson, you've pitched a lot of no-hitters when you're in your amateur career with Venezuela. Did you have in your mind today that you could accomplish something in your first White Sox start? No, I don't. I don't. I never think that I'm going to throw a no-hitter. I just, every time I get in the mouth, I just try to do the best I can do. It was terrific. You started off with an outstanding fastball, struck out the first three guys in the batting order, and you went with it pretty much the entire ball game. What did you think about that heater? Yeah, I just followed um, Karkovic, every, every pitch he call, every he call I throw in there. You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't know how to say. <laughs> Your breaking ball was terrific, too. You had a good curveball, and the changeup really came around after the first couple of innings. Yeah, yeah I just, uh, the first few innings, you know, I started struggling with my breaking ball. Then uh, I, I talked to Sammy Ellis, and then he helped me out. Uh, he told me what I got to do, stay short in my motion, and uh, I got my breaking ball back. Well, you had certainly everything working for you. Two outs in the ninth inning. Cal Ripken Jr. is the hitter. What was going through your mind at that particular time? Well, uh, I just tried to do a perf I mean, try, uh, like perfect pitches outside. He's uh, swinging. Say, so, well, let's see. Well, so let's talk about the play at third base down, the slow roller down there where uh, Karkovic threw the ball to first and the error was charged to run. Describe what happened. You sort of let the ball go past, didn't you? Well, you know, I, I can't cast uh, the ball into the first play, but Karkovic, he said he got him, and I let him, I let him take it. How about the what about the great play, the, uh, yeah. just the play by Lance Johnson? What was it? That was really the key defensive play for you this afternoon. Yeah, uh, I got to say thank you to Johnson for <laughs> having that, that land drive. <laughs> You've had 12 no-hitters in Venezuela now. I mean, this is not something that is striking you unusual, I would think. You know, this might... My first no hitter in professional. Yeah, I never think I'm gonna do it in big leagues. But. Well, Wilson, congratulations. I know you've got hundreds of people that want to congratulate you inside the White Sox clubhouse. It was just a, probably the most magnificent effort we have seen in years in the White Sox uniform. Continued success throughout the rest of the season, okay? All right, well, that's it for down here, Hawk. Let's send it back up to uh, the Hawkster upstairs. All right, Wilson Alvarez with a no-hitter this afternoon. Sox win it 7-0. We'll be back with more right after this.